Hello there, this is Welsh ASMR 82. Hey, how are you doing? And in today's video, we're just going to focus on the Premier League and talk about the season ending, uh, the season as a whole. I'll be trying to do this for quite a few of the leagues as they come to a finish. I know there's another game left in Serie A, I think another one in La Liga. I did one on focusing on the top of the table for Bundesliga um, earlier on this week, so check that out as well. Yeah, and I'll try and do some others. I know that the Premier League in Russia has got one le one game left. Um, the Danish League has got one game left, although the title's already been decided. So let's look today just at the Premier League. We had um, no surprises for who won the league in the end, um, but the main battle was for Europe and for the relegation spots. So let's focus on those games and look at all of the last round of results. And uh, if you enjoy the video, don't forget to click that like button and drop me a comment with any observations that you have over this round of matches, the season as a whole, particularly if you support one of the clubs. Uh, let me know how you feel the season has gone, and uh, I'll respond to your comments as I love reading them. Okay, let's go. Okay, not forgetting that this is an ASMR video, so it's meant to be relaxing and maybe help you drop off to sleep. That's why I'm talking like a weirdo, because um, I still get comments like, why are you talking like that? So I, I feel like I need to say. Okay, so this is the table overall, and then we look at the matches. Man City finishing top. 89 points. Arsenal with a magnificent campaign, 84 points. Just those two games just cost them everything in the end. Had they won both of them, one of which being against, um, actually, Nottingham Forest and Brighton, I mean, you'd think that maybe Man City wouldn't have lost to Brentford had they not already secured the title, but you never know. Brentford have done stranger things this season. But those two points, that's six. So you add that, and it's 90. So, just saying. I don't think you'll agree with me. I think Man City would have gone well after that game. But, yeah. Manchester United managed to finish third overall, 75. Newcastle United back in the uh, Champions League, 71 points. Liverpool missing out on Champions League football. Um, Mohamed Salah, really angry about it. He came out in a press conference and talked and said that um, that no one else was to blame but them, the players, blah, blah, blah. So they're upset they're in the Europa League. Brighton and Hove Albion in the Europa League. That's magnificent. What an amazing campaign they've had. They've been such a breath of fresh air. Aston Villa, think about they, where they were before Unai Emery took over. Um, now they get Conference League football. Tottenham, turn of the year they were in Champions League spots. They... They look to me as if they've not even made Europe. Um, that's shocking. Brentford and Fulham and Crystal Palace all in the top half of the league. Chelsea in 12th. Unbelievable. And then down the bottom, saved from relegation, Nottingham Forest. Importantly, Everton managed to be saved, but I think, what's the number? Is it seven? Seven years after they win the Premier League title, they get relegated. If anyone's a bit of a statistician and they know Blackburn's record, when did Blackburn get relegated after, how many years after winning the title? Um, yeah, so Leicester um, down, Leeds also down, and Southampton we knew already was down, but that final day draw that they had was insane. Uh, four all, I think it was, we'll have a look together, shall we? The last round of matches, so all on the same day, so no cheating. Arsenal, Wolves, 5-0. I think Wolves have got to be one of the uh, teams that people consider for relegation next year, to be honest. Aston Villa beating Brighton, no easy feat. 2-1. Brentford beating Man City, again, no easy feat, 1-0. Let's look at some of the scorers. We can take our time with this today. Uh, Shaka with 2. Will he still be there? I read a rumour that he might not be. Um, Saka will be. Uh, Gabriel Jesus and Kivio with the goals. 
and then we had Aston Villa Brighton. So Aston Villa needed to better Tottenham's result, and a win was good enough. So um, Douglas Luiz and Watkins, Ollie Watkins, against Undav. Will McAllister be playing for Brighton next year? That's the question. I know I've got lots of Brighton fans watching this, so let me know. Pinnock on the 85th minute to uh, do the unthinkable and beat Man City. Oh, look at that, though. They did have their fair share of the game. Who played? Oh, look, though. Alvarez, Palmer, Foden, Gomez, Mares, Lewis, Phillips, Walker, Laporte, and Ake with Edison. Yeah, they haven't got any, like, De Bruyne or... Yeah, fair enough. Still, you know, still Man City, though. Chelsea managed to get a draw against um, fourth place Newcastle. Gordon got a goal and Trippier on goal, so one all. San Maximan actually he's not had a very good season comparatively. Usually, years, you know, in seasons gone by, he's been the bright light, but he's struggled this season weirdly, even though the rest of the team has done well. Uh, Crystal Palace, Nottingham Forest, one all. Awoni has come good actually after his um, move from the Bundesliga. And Hughes. Um, so yeah. Oh, Hennessy got a game. Wow. <laughs> Sorry, it's a Welshman. I'm like, what? So that's one all. But they were already safe, Nottingham Forest, so no pressure. This was a big one. And I was watching the time ticking over in the match um, on the mobile app. I didn't watch the game. It says three minutes added, but like, I swear to goodness, it was in like the 98th minute, it was still playing. Uh, Decore scored the goal that kept them up. I've always rated him. I liked him when he played for Watford. Bournemouth had plenty of the ball though, but it looks like they didn't play that well, unfortunately. Brooksy, hopefully he can get over his injury in time for the Wales matches. We need him back. Apparently, I hear, according to Twitter, he played extremely well. Uh, Leeds, I watched this match live, um, and yeah, Leeds were so poor. Harrison got one goal for them, but they were already um, two, n two nil down at that point, so Kane scored in the second minute. Then again, the 69th, Pedro Porro scored in the 47th, and Lucas Moura scored in injury time. I think they just need to regroup, and um, they, they've got the fan base to try and get back up quite quickly, to be honest. It's a big club, isn't it, Leeds? Uh, Leicester City did manage to win. I didn't realise that. Against uh, West Ham, but it just wasn't enough because Everton won. Barnes and Fass with the goals against Von Owls. West Ham themselves are a little bit lucky not to go down, but they've got that distraction of the Conference League final to uh, think about. And then Manchester United beating Fulham, but only just. Tete doing well. Sancho has got a lot better since the World Cup. And Fernandes with the winner. He was man of the match as well. Curiously, the lowest rated person was Casemiro, which is not usual. Man United fans, what is going to happen with Harry Maguire in the summer? And the news is that Daniel Levy has said, bog off, you're not having uh, Harry Kane, so who are you going to sign for up front? Do you need anyone? And Southampton 4, Liverpool 4. It's always the way, isn't it? When a side gets relegated, the pressure's off them and they just start playing better. I remember a couple of years back where Newcastle had already been relegated and they played Spurs on the last day and didn't they beat them something like 6-1 or something stupid? It's just when you don't have anything to play for anymore, you just kind of relax. Ward Prowse, some, some people are in talking about trying to sign him in the summer, 40 million they're banding around. I don't know if he'll leave Southampton, I think he just loves them. Solimana, two goals. Armstrong, a goal. Jota, two goals. They've missed him. If they'd had him not injured, I think they would have got fit fourth place. Firmino, who's leaving, and Hakpo, who's been brilliant. Firmino, I read in the BBC uh, gossip column yesterday that 
there's talks of Real Madrid. Uh, really? How many 30-year-old strikers do they need? Okay. So those are the results. Let's look at the table once more and just talk about the stories of the season then. So Arsenal. Arsenal are back. Champions League football for them. Um, how do you think they'll do? I think they'll do all right. I think they could reach the knockout, maybe a quarterfinal. If they... They're not renowned for spending money these days, are they? Um, I don't think they ever have been, actually. So, and they certainly don't have the the money behind them that Man City does, Newcastle. And, you know, Man United is a really, really rich club. They are one of the richest clubs in the world, but their shareholders like that money and they don't, they don't spend it much of it. They'll be buying someone. Um, Newcastle will definitely be buying people for Champions League football. Man City will keep the straw, keep the squad as strong as possible. Can Arsenal keep up with that spending power? That's the question. They don't have that financial base that the other clubs do. So that for me is the big question. Can they compete um, at that level year after year? Or is it a word of a one-off? I hope not. I've enjoyed watching this season, I've got to say. Liverpool, uh, I think not getting into the Champions League is going to be a blow for their transfer ambitions. They're always linked to, you know, absolute top players. And I think that they won't want to play Europa League football. Brighton, it'll attract a completely different sort of brand and class of player. They've already been finding amazing players from nowhere. Their scouts just are amazing. Um, but will this mean that they can... Well, this, it, can go, it can go one of two ways, can't it? If, if they sign, you know, a really big player and it doesn't work, then it's costly. And I've seen smaller clubs buy big players and it not work, maybe they should just stick to what they're doing and buy, you know, unknown South Americans and turn them over for a massive um, profit. Aston Villa, on the other hand, are a big club, really big. And the fact that they're back in Europe could be massive. You know, I've heard, um, who have I heard linked to them now? Someone really, really big. Hmm, who was it? Oh, Dusan Vlahovic from Juventus. You know, he's he's had an on-off season, okay, but essentially he is a very good, very good striker. On his day, I'd say he's like top 25 strikers in Europe sort of thing. You're going to laugh at me. I know some of you <laughs> disagree strongly. Um, but he's got all the assets that if he's playing in a good team at a good time, Juventus have had a terrible season. Um, then I think I did watch a game with Juventus a couple of weeks back and he literally missed everything he touched by half an inch. It just, you could see the frustration on his face. But anyway, I, I, I maintain he's a good player. I've been wrong so many times, so don't believe me. But yeah, you know, they've been they're talking about signing a Juve player who's, you know, okay, he's not had the best of seasons, but he's still a good player. So yeah, they're a big club and I think they could, if they wanted to, sign some really big players. Tottenham, on the other hand, you know, it's an absolute death blow to them. You can't tell me that Harry Kane and Son are going to want to play for a club that isn't even in Europe, uh, doesn't have a manager, you know, it's chaos. I've done videos on Tottenham Hotspur this year, so I'm not going to talk about it in too much detail today. You know how I feel. Uh, just, I think uh, some big changes at the top need to happen, personally, that's my belief. Um, and then down the bottom, obviously, Leicester, the end of an era. They're going to lose their big players now this summer. Everyone wants um, Barnes and... Um, what's his face? The one that I... <laughs> my me and names are terrible. How does it just... Squad. Um, Harvey Barnes. James Madison. Absolutely everyone. Champions League clubs are after him en masse, so um, yeah, he's uh, not going to be there next season either. Uh, big shame for them. Leeds United, mm, did they have any massive players anyway? I don't think so. I think they'll be able to keep quite a lot of that squad together if they want to. Um, I think they want to get rid of some um, players who aren't really doing the job for the club. 
and Southampton again can clear out some of the sort of players who are committed to the club and do their best to try and keep hold of people like Ward Prowse who do definitely want to be there. They've got enough, they've got such a good academy that they can bring through players. I think they just need to rely on those for a little while and then add to them with the right type of player. But what do you think? Are you happy with your club's performance this season? Are you not happy? Personally, I was supporting Nottingham Forest for their Welsh players and Fulham as well. So I'm really happy that Forest stayed up and Fulham were in the top half of the table. I've been a bit of a long-standing Newcastle United bracket fan. So to see them back in the Champions League is mega exciting. I'm really, really happy. And I'm really excited about the futures for Brighton, Aston Villa and Arsenal. Um, yeah, um, very bored of Man City winning the league. Totally gutted that Arsenal didn't uh, manage to do it in the end. Um, I just talked this week about, you know, Bayern Munich winning their league in the Bundesliga all the time. I don't want to get into a situation like that in this country. Um, it would just be so damaging for the league. So um, someone needs to come up with something and <laughs> beat the unbeatable. Um, yeah, what do you think? Okay, uh, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, hit that like button for me. Subscribe if you're new. And um, I'll try and get through some of the other leagues as and when they finish. I've got loads of ideas of cool videos to do during the summer months, so thank you. If you've got any more, keep them coming in comments. I love your comments and I read and respond to all of them, so thank you so much and see you soon. Bye. Bye, 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 bye.